Another cyclone forming in the Philippine Sea on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for October 30th. Looking out across the tropics right now, we have two tropical cyclones, Tropical Storm Nalgi on the other side of the Philippines after it made landfall in the last 24 hours, and a new tropical depression forming between Yap and Palau, and that could be developing into a tropical storm fairly soon. In the Atlantic, we also have areas of interest to watch. A 70% chance now for the Caribbean disturbance, and models are slowly coming back on board after they dropped it briefly. Uh, but it looks like we could see something out of this, and a 10% chance still for the system that's currently pretty much over Bermuda. In the Eastern Pacific, we have no areas of interest to watch right now on day 169 of hurricane season. Is it over? Well, there's still a little while longer before the actual end of the season, but it looks pretty quiet. The Western Pacific, of course, has these two systems right now, Nalgi and 94W, still not been uh, designated anything else yet, uh, and that system is expected to continue westwards towards the Philippines, of course, which has just been impacted by what was Typhoon Nalgi, and that could re-intensify shortly in the South China Sea. In the southern Indian Ocean, we have one area of interest here, uh, and now a moderate chance 50-50 on this system as it persists towards the southeast, uh, currently away from any land areas. Well then, let's check some of the satellite imagery, and this is what the Atlantic Ocean looks like right now. A lot of dry air, as you can see in the Caribbean. I mean, you can barely even see the land masses underneath all of that. Uh, but uh, cutting through it is that tropical disturbance, which is now becoming more well established, as well as that other system over towards Bermuda there. You can see both of them there, but n not, neither of them looking very good just yet. The Eastern Pacific also looking extremely dry and worn out. Just a few little thunderstorms left of the intertropical convergence zone there in the uh, easternmost part of the Pacific. A very hostile environment, clearly. And looking towards the Western Pacific, which seems to be having it at the moment, uh, you can see how extremely large um, Nalgi has become. It's completely spread out there. Um, it's almost being stretched, I suppose, from one end to the other. It's trying to reconsolidate near the center there with uh, some more uh, banding, uh, but really massive system there from southwest to northeast, almost being torn apart by its size. There's a close-up view of the center area of the storm. This trying to build back that core again of course after it passed through the Philippines and right now it looks to be just west uh, of Pampanga in uh, central Luzon and is likely to continue northwestwards. And there's a view of both of them again, that other system on the right hand side, that's the tropical depression with a few cloud bursts there. Uh, we could be in for a very wet 24 hours in Palau and you may get some tropical storm force winds if it intensifies a little bit more. It looks like it's got a circulation, it's being quite substantially sheared as you can clearly make out on the infrared imagery there. Um, I don't know whether that is fully to do with Nalgi or not, uh, but I assume that at least part of it is due to the much bigger storm to its uh, west really then you look at the size comparison it's almost laughable how uh, mismatched they are in terms of size uh, but both of them are still out there in their own right here's a wider shot of both of them here and you can see how much Nalgi has expanded there and all of that convection on the eastern side as well that's headed towards Taiwan and could deliver extremely high amounts of rain there as well in northern Taiwan still as we'll take a look at those rainfall models a little bit later on some of the banding also reaching the coast of China now as well and Hong Kong, some of the outermost peripheral stuff. Uh, you won't be getting anything too bad there just yet. Uh, here is the uh, latest imagery of the Indian Ocean and you can see that system starting to develop in the South Indian Ocean and this is the Australian region right now. Not too much going on here at the moment but the usual thunderstorms blowing up in those tropical regions. Um, and not much else to say at this juncture. Uh, the season is on its way though, so we're getting prepared. 
Sea surface temperatures look like this, and this is the Eastern Pacific. Uh, not much warm waters left, but still off the coast of Mexico, uh, pushing 30 degrees Celsius still. The loop current still active in the Gulf of Mexico, still pushing in 30 degrees Celsius waters to the Southern Gulf, but the Northern Gulf really cooling down now. Uh, the um, uh, the Gulf Stream obviously still fairly warm there as well but north of there it really drops off a cliff uh, but in the Caribbean still extremely warm 30 degrees Celsius plus maybe um, and just a little bit less north of the uh, Greater Antilles. Indian Ocean still looking pretty warm even after Citrang pushing 30 degrees there as well. The uh, Philippine Sea and the Philippine region 30 degrees in that little area of the western part of uh, of southern Luzon which is where the storm passed through not long ago and look at the rest of the Philippine Sea still very warm 28 to 30 degrees Celsius commonplace out to the Mariana Islands and beyond so good conditions there and warming up in the southern hemisphere as well you may notice there sea surface temperature anomalies are well above average in the Australian region just want to point that one out in the western Pacific it's a little bit above average and in the eastern Pacific it's not very much above average there and the La Nina effect still quite clear the Atlantic is quite a bit above average especially in the Caribbean where this system is tracking and in the subtropical zone so we've got to watch out for potential developments up there as well into the late season uh, here is the oceanic heat content it has dropped a little bit in the Western Caribbean, but there's still plenty of real hot spots there for this potential storm to traverse through near Jamaica and on into the Western Caribbean almost. And there is the Western Pacific really dropping off quite a bit there in the oceanic heat content, and in the Eastern Pacific there's really not much left there either. So then let's check the computer models. This is the GFS showing us what we're looking at for the Atlantic in the next five days and you'll just about make out the system in the Caribbean. GFS is still not very fond of it uh, in that five day period and then it moves off towards the west and down right into southern Belize there. You may have seen it dive down and start to become a cyclone right at the end. Um, and then uh, towards the northern Atlantic you can see that system still persisting towards the end of that five day period and trying to develop at the end actually. This is the Western Pacific of course, Nalgi moving off towards the Northwest consolidating, becoming a typhoon, moving northwards there and then a sharp turn west or is it? Uh, not quite, it's still northwestwards and dies off just before reaching Macau. Um, so that's a rather interesting scenario. Tropical storm force winds, I guess, can't be ruled out any longer for places like Hong Kong, uh, Macau and the whole of uh, uh, Guangdong as well as uh, the other system there which had a short life through Palau and then towards uh, Mindanao where it could cause some more rainfall woes. And here is the southern Indian Ocean. This system does develop eventually. It takes a little while but there it is on day four, day five uh, becoming a significant tropical cyclone. Some other models have it forming sooner than that but models are in decent agreement about the formation of this storm uh, late on in that five day period. So I guess that's a fair 50%. Let's take a look now at those uh, rainfall estimates for the Philippines predominantly and the rest of Southeast Asia that you can see on the map here. You can see there those really heavy rainfall amounts reaching Taiwan and of course that big pink line of the storm moving northwards and the rain and wind just about reaching the coast of China. Behind it you can see the influence from the other system, although much less of an influence over Palau and towards Yap. But in the rest of the, in the Philippine Islands right now we're still looking at maximum uh, rainfall, further rainfall possibly of 8 inches, which is 200 millimeters. And look at Taiwan, double that, 16 inches, 400 millimeters possible in northern Taiwan. Uh, general places in the other areas of the Philippines we could still see some areas of 3 inches. And on Palau we're expecting 2 inches of rain, that's... Uh, that's uh, one that's 50 millimeters and for Hong Kong Macau area we're looking at a little bit more than that possibly getting close to 100 millimeters into the moderate range then and this is day 5 to 10 uh, what does the Atlantic have in store well a new system develops down in the southern Caribbean there off Panama that is a new system of course not the one we've been tracking and becomes a hurricane in the Caribbean and goes the wrong way moving through Haiti and then off towards the Turks and Caicos Islands well that would be a sight to see uh, in the late season you'll also notice that the other system the current 10% near Bermuda does eventually become a tropical cyclone up there in the North Atlantic and persists and moves off towards the east and tries 
to hold itself together near the Azores. And in the southern hemisphere, looking again at this system, uh, that potential cyclone will be no threat to land, drifting southwards and then southwestwards and then stalling again actually there as we get towards that later part of that 10 day period before starting to edge just a little bit further towards the west northwest. Um, not really much of an event, uh, certainly there will be no land areas impacted, but it could be a third storm of the season already at this point in the southwest Indian Ocean. Well that's all the serious stuff done with, you can take a look at the merch store by scanning that barcode and taking a look at our products. We also have full season and individual animations bespoke on request and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt. It's looking increasingly likely that it'll roll over into another new year of waiting at this rate. Uh, but we'll be there when it happens. In the Silly Range, well, you can see these two systems again, that hurricane pushing northeast was all the way, turning post-tropical, becoming an extremely powerful and large extra-tropical cyclone as it moves towards Greenland. That was a strong Category 2, maybe even Category 3 force winds there as it pushed close to Atlantic Canada and then off towards Greenland. The other tropical cyclone still there in a the very long range and dies off a little bit uh, closer to the end of that 16-day period. You can still trace a there at the end as a remnant low sinking right down towards the eastern Atlantic and I think we've just lost it there at the end. In the Indian Ocean, North Indian looks like it might start up again with a potential another system uh, in the middle part of November. That's extremely long range, a tropical storm there uh, which could impact that area, I think that's Tamil Nadu area of India, uh, so that could happen, but that once again is very long range, but it is climatologically feasible, definitely. Well, that was a breath. Uh, breathless uh, moment there let's take a breather and uh, tell you about hurricane week 2022 which is on the way coming up in just 30 days time or 29 days time something like that it's on the 28th of november for the whole week as the title might suggest well what happened on this day it was in 2015 that we had cyclone chapala peaking as a category 5 in the north indian ocean an extremely surprising storm and almost as surprising as the one that followed it the following week, Meg, and they both ended up uh, moving towards the Gulf of Aden, passing uh, Socotra Island, I think it is, or Socorro, I keep forgetting the name, I get mixed up between those two, I think, yeah, I can't remember which one it was, um, and I think I was away during this storm as well, uh, vacation category 5 curse there. October 30th, 2015. Back to today, and the next name on the Atlantic naming list is still Lisa. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Seymour. And in the Central Pacific, we are indeed still waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, of course, we've had Nalgi now, and the next name on the list is Banyan. In the North Indian Ocean, we're now going to be looking out for Mandus after Citran in the last week. Um, and so far we've had 81 storms around the world this year. In the Southern Hemisphere, the Australian region's next name is Darien, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Cheniso, and in the South Pacific, it's Harley. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.